Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about different roles of operating system. First role is operating system as an extended machine or we can say as a virtual machine. And second role is operating system as a resource manager. Let us see both the roles one by one. So first of all, operating system as an extended machine. And the architecture of computer is difficult to program here if we consider the architecture then architecture means instruction set memory organization io bus structure so this architecture of most of the computer at machine level language or we can say at low level language is primitive and awkward to program means it is difficult to program let's say example suppose this user wants to read from floppy or we can say hard disk so let us consider here hard disk this user wants to read some data from this hard disk here there isn't any type of operating system so we consider this user is reading data from this hard disk without interface or without interfering any type of operating system so in this case how this user will read data from this hard disk now suppose this user wants to read data from this hard disk so this one is user this one is hard disk between this hard disk and user there is one disk controller what this disk controller will do this disk controller will find out data from this hard disk from a location or address that is specified by this user and fetch the data from hard disk to buffer and provide the data from buffer to main memory or to user so this disk controller will act as intermediate between this hard disk and this user so first of all this user will write a command and also specify the memory address or address on hard disk from where this user wants to read data and then initiate io now once the disk controller will get these two things that is command and address this disk controller will find the requested data from a address that is specified by this user now during this process this user will continuously check the status of disk controller that whether this disk controller has finished the searching or not if finished suppose if this disk control has finished the searching then what it will do the data from this hard disk is copied to buffer and then that data is moved from buffer to user or into main memory so in the absence of operating system a user has to perform these four steps to read a data from hard disk and this user has to write some program to read a data from this hard disk or any device so if all the user will have to do this messy detail means if all the user will have to perform these four steps then the program will be very difficult to write and becomes quite long and program will be hardware dependent means if a user wants to read data from hard disk then user has to write a program for hard disk if user wants to read data from floppy drive then user has to write another program specially for this floppy drive so that is a hardware dependent so user don't want to be involved in programming of storage device therefore here operating system will provide a basic commands or instructions to perform various operations such as read write modify save or close and user will simply use these commands or instructions to perform this operation user will never do any type of programming for this task so dealing with this command or instruction is easier than writing a program an operating system will hide the complexity of hardware and present a beautiful interface to user so in such a way simply operating system will provide a basic command or instructions to perform basic tasks like read write close save etc so user did not to write any type of programming for this task 
now second one is operating system as a resource manager now there are lots of resources in our computer like cpu or we can say processor memory that is ram io devices such as hard disk mouse keyboard printer scanner and many more now if computer is used by more than one user then in such a case this all the user will fight for these resources so in this case this operating system will control the access to all the resources by all these users now how first of all the resources are allocated fairly or we can say equally means all the resources are equally allocated or fairly allocated to each and every process there should not be unfairness between these processes let's take example suppose we are having a printer initially a process p1 arrives to print 50 lines so initially this printer is free so this printer is allocated to process p1 so p1 starts printing now after printing 10 lines out of 50 lines this of process p1 another process arrives process p2 that wants to print 20 lines but here this 50 lines is not completed means printing of 50 lines is not completed so this printer is allocated to this process p1 itself and process p2 is in waiting state means this process will have to wait until this printer is allocated to this process now after printing 20 lines out of 50 lines of process p1 two another process arrives process p3 and process p4 and both of this process wants to print 50 lines now there are three process that are waiting for this printer to print some number of lines now after completing process p1 this printer becomes free now these three process are there in waiting state means these three process are waiting for this printer but this printer is allocated to process p3 because it this process wants to print only 15 lines but this process wants to print 20 lines so this printer is allocated to process p3 now again once the process p3 complete complete its execution means after printing 50 lines this process completed now again printer becomes free now this printer is allocated to process p4 again process p4 complete next process comes p5 suppose it requires 10 lines to print again process printer is allocated to process p5 here this process p2 is continuously waiting this process is not getting this printer to print these 20 lines so this is not a fair means it's unfair this type of unfairness should not happen in resource allocation means all these resources are fairly allocated to each and every process now second one is the resources are protected from cross access what do you mean by cross access cross access means once a resource is allocated to any process that same resource cannot be used by any another process until that current running process will voluntarily release that resource let's take same example printer that is allocated to process p1 want to print 50 lines so is allocated next after printing 10 lines next process comes p2 that wants to print 20 line after printing 20 lines two process arrives p3 and p4 both wants to print 15 lines now here this printer is allocated to process p1 during the same again this process p3 will start to use this printer means at the same time before releasing this printer by this process p1 another process p3 starts to use this resource that is known as cross access this type of cross access should not be happen means once a resource is allocated to any process that same resource cannot be used by any another process until that process will roll up voluntarily release that resource so there should not be any type of cross access between processes third one is access to the resource is synchronized so that operation are correct and consistent means there should be synchronization between each process so that the final result is consistent and correct again let's take example 
Suppose if we write a program to calculate 7 plus 9 minus 6 multiply with 4 divided by 2 in C language. So if we consider in C language, the precedence of multiplication and division is higher than addition and subtraction. So first of all, this multiplication will be performed, then after division, then after addition, then after subtraction. Actually, the answer is 4. Now consider, suppose this process P1 performs addition of these two, P2 performs subtraction of 9 minus 6, process P3 performs multiplication of 6 and 4, process P4 performs division of 4 and 2. Now if we perform all the processes from left to right means first process P1, then after P2, then after P3, then after P4, then answer is 20, that is wrong. Because synchronization is not there means proper sequence is not followed now if all these processes is to be synchronized and proper sequence is followed like first process p3 is performed means multiplication of 6 and 4 is performed then after second at, at step number 2 process p4 is performed that is whatever the answer of 6 multiply by 4 that is 24 divided by 2 that is performed then after at step number 3 process p1 is performed that is 7 plus 9 then after step number 4 minus is performed that is sum of these minus the answer of these two then and only then we get the correct answer that is 4 so whenever a more than one process is to be executed in such a case each and every process should be synchronized so that the final answer should be correct and consistent now deadlock are detected and resolved or we can say dead if it is required means os can detect a deadlock it can resolve as well as it can be avoided now what is deadlock means we have already seen this type of situation in our city here from this way all these vehicles come towards this side from this road all these vehicles move towards this side. In this road, all the vehicles move towards this side, but that these all are blocked by this vehicle from this side. So here in this area, all the vehicles are blocked. Means no any vehicle moves for this. This situation is known as deadlock. These type of deadlocks are also created in our computer system. So whenever in our computer system, these type of deadlocks are created this deadlock should be detected and resolved or we can say it, it can be avoided by operating system so os can be act as a resource manager in such a situation now, when a resource is used by more than one user or one process that is known as shared resource this shared resource can be used by more than one process in two different manner first one is in time sharing or we can say in multiplexing the example of these resources is cpu means for this particular time cpu is used by this process after this time this cpu is allocated to another process again this process will use this resource up to here again here for a particular this time this cpu is used by this process so at a particular time there is only one process can use this CPU means it is not possible to use this resource by more than one process at a particular time means this resource is allocated to a one process at a particular time now second is space sharing or we can say multiplexing the example of this resource is memory here the entire memory is divided into sub parts and all the part is allocated to a particular process for example this memory is divided into four part this portion is allocated to process p1 this portion is allocated to process p2 this portion is allocated to process p3 and other or remaining is empty space here all these processes can use this resource instant or a particular time or concurrently means whenever uh, this pro process p1 is using this portion at the same time another process p2 can use this portion but 
in previous case that is in time sharing at a particular time only one process can use that resource here at a particular time all the process can use this resource so that is the difference between time sharing and space sharing thank you very much